What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an amazing video today showing you how to set up a dynamic date axis. This will let your user select the granularity that they wanna show within a visual, or it even has an option to dynamically select the granularity. So let's walk through this example quickly. So when I've selected the daily granularity, you can see all of my sales are by day, but if I click on monthly, we're now viewing sales by month or sales by year. We even have the option for that dynamic date axis. As you can see, I have about four years of data, so my visual is showing it on the yearly level. But if I were to filter this down to a smaller date selection, we will view it on the monthly level. And if we filter down to an even smaller selection, we'll view that data on a daily level. So it's entirely dynamic based on the user selection. A lot of times you might be building a report and you don't actually have that many days worth of data, but the amount of data will grow over time. So if you build a report that's showing the data on a daily level, over time, maybe a few months down the line, you're gonna have a lot of individual bars in a bar chart, for example, and you wanna show it on a monthly level. Instead of changing the design of the report to satisfy monthly or yearly granularity, you can set it up in this dynamic fashion. And this is kind of an alternative to drill down because you are able to put a year, month, day hierarchy in a visual as well, but I do find that users find that drill down is a little bit confusing to figure out. So I'd like to take that out of their hands if possible and give them the option to select the granularity or leave it completely dynamic based on their selection. Before we hop into how to set this up, two things for you. One, if you wanna download this PBIX, the link to the blog post will be down in the description and there will be a link to download the PBIX there. And two, if you're new, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's the best way to show your support and helps me continue making Power BI content. With that, let's go ahead and dive into a new file, which doesn't have anything set up. It just has the data loaded in. And quickly, I'm gonna show you the model. It's pretty simple. We just have my orders table, gives us all of the orders information, connected to my order lines table, which gives us all of the order line information. Together, these give us the revenue for each order. And then finally, we have a simple date dimension table, connected to my order date column in my orders table. Again, if you wanna check out this model, make sure you download the PBX from the blog post link but this is enough to get us going. So let's go ahead and create a new table that's going to act as our visual date axis. I'm gonna click on new table and I'm gonna call this table dynamic date selections. And I'm gonna keep this simple to start with. I'm going to use the add columns function and this table is going to need four columns. The first column is going to tell us which type of granularity it is. For example, daily, monthly, yearly, or dynamic. Secondly, we need a date column. That's just going to be a list of all dates. The third column is going to be the date that's going to define the granularity in the visual. And the fourth is going to be the order, how we wanna show the order of these types in a slicer, for example. We'll talk about each of these four columns in detail in just a second. The daily granularity type is very easy. The first thing we need to type in here is a simple calendar function from the min of my date table to the max of my date table. So that's going to give us a list of all dates uh, from the start of the date table to the end of the date table. Close that off. That's going to give us our date column. The second column, I'm gonna call visual date. This is going to be the column that's actually shown in the visual itself. For the daily granularity, it's simply the date column as well because we don't need to condense it down to any specific granularity. And next, I'm going to create a new column called type, which is simply the word daily. And then finally, I'm going to create an order column, which is going to be set equal to one and click enter. That's basically step one to create this table. I'm going to change my date formats quickly. So it looks nice and pretty. Okay, so I have my dates, my visual date, daily and one. Uh, there's no difference between date and visual date as of right now, but it will be in the other selections. So let's go ahead and create our monthly selection as well. In order to add multiple tables together, we have to use the handy union function. So I'm going to union this table that we just created with a very similar table for the second selection. So let's copy that, paste it below. And instead of daily, this is going to be monthly. Uh, it's going to be second in order. The only difference between my date columns is going to be in the visual date. I need to confine the granularity down to the monthly level. We can quickly do that by passing in the date uh, function. I'm going to take the year of my date column, the month of my date column, 
and return one for the day. That's going to ensure that, for example, let's, let's look at an example here, January 5th, 2013, it's going to take the year 2013, the month of January, but always return a one. So every day in January is going to be the first of January 2013. So that's exactly what we need. Let's go ahead and uh, close everything off here and see what our monthly type looks like. I'm gonna filter down to monthly and let's sort by date. So as you can see, just like I was saying, every day in January is January 1st. Every day in February is February 1st. We can start to visualize to make sure we understand this fully. But before we do that, we need to set up a relationship between our new table and our date table. Simply drag the date to the date. And let's set this up as a bi-directional cross filter. Wonderful. Now let's come back to our visualization pane. Let's create a bar chart. And I am simply going to throw in, I think I have a revenue measure into my values and my visual date into the axis. You can see it looks a little bit weird as of right now. That's because we need to filter down to a single type from our table. So let's create a slicer. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly make this a single select because we only wanna have one selected at a time. You can see that already fixes the issue. So either the daily granularity or the monthly granularity. They already have the choice between daily and granularity, and that's actually pretty cool. Let's quickly add the yearly granularity. We can just do that quickly by copying this code and pasting below, calling it yearly, giving an order of three. And the only difference here is instead of month date, I can replace that with a one. So every year, let's actually filter down to yearly to see what we have. So every day in 2013, is looking like January 1st, 2013. And as we hit 2014, every day is looking like January 1st, 2014. So it's confining all those dates down to a single uh, date within that year. So now as we have yearly, we can see that all of that data is confined down to the yearly granularity. So that gets you really far. Maybe that's as far as you wanna go, just giving your user the ability to select the granularity. But I also like that little dynamic piece that's going to allow them to select a date range and the granularity is going to filter down dynamically. So let's go ahead and add a fourth option here. I'm actually going to copy it from daily because it's gonna be very similar to daily. So I'm going to call this dynamic, change the order to four, and that's exactly all we need there. So if we go back to our visualization pane, dynamic isn't actually going to do anything yet. It's just going to show the daily granularity. And before I forget, I need to highlight my type column, sort by order, just so in our visual it sorts as I want daily, monthly, yearly, and dynamic is the last thing. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in a another date slicer here using our date column from our dynamic date selection so we can see that we have this nice date slicer it does filter down this visual but i want to do it in a dynamic way like i showed you in the example to start with there are a couple steps in order to complete this method uh, instead i'm actually going to create a second table a kind of copy of these slicer selections i'm going to do that by creating a new table here table tools new table i'm going to call this slicer selections and I'm gonna set that equal to values of my type column. So it's gonna give us the distinct values of that type column. And actually I'm going to add that order column back in. So add columns, start with my values. I'm gonna call this order. And I'm simply going to look up the value of that order based on type, searching via type. Don't need to worry too much about that logic. I just wanna get that order column back so that I can sort by that order as well. So now back in our visualizations, uh, I'm actually going to change this slicer to pull from the new type we just created. Instead of our dynamic date, uh, I'm going to look at our slicer selections type. So as we switch that, we'll see that our uh, slicer selection no longer affects the visual and that's totally fine. We need to filter down this visual based on a measure filter instead of via the slicer. So we can do that by creating a new measure. And I'm gonna paste in the code here. I have it called date filter. And let me go ahead and reconfigure this a little bit based on our table names, dynamic date selections. 
There we go. So I'll walk you through this logic. So firstly, we have three different variables. We have a slicer selection, which is grabbing the slicer selection that we've chosen in our slicer. The current type is the type of the date dynamic selections table. And the num days is the difference between the min date and the max date. For example, when our date slicer is looking from January 1st, 2013 through May 31st, 2016, that's almost four years of data. So the date difference is somewhere in the realm of a thousand days. And then we have this switch statement that is checking if the slicer selection is daily, then we want to return the daily scope. If the slicer selection is monthly, return the monthly scope. And if the slicer selection is yearly, return the yearly scope. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out these last three lines, which are handling the dynamic selection. But for now, let's go ahead and see what this does. We need to add this filter into the visual level filters of this axis here, or this visual here. So I actually need to add my type column to my visual level filters. And I need to filter down based on top in, top one, based on my date filter. So it's only ever going to return a single type based on this date filter. So now, as I apply that filter, we can see that as we selected daily, we're showing the daily granularity again, monthly is monthly, yearly is yearly, and dynamic we have not set up yet. Going back to our measure, if we uncomment these lines of code, it will now work, but I will walk you through what this means. So if we've selected dynamic in our slicer and the difference between the min date and the max date is less than or equal to 90 days, we want to show the daily granularity. If it's dynamic and the number of days between min and max is somewhere between 90 and 730 or 729, we want to show monthly. And keep in mind that these numbers of days is completely arbitrary based on what I put in there. You can change the value to be whatever you want. And then I put it to where if the number of days between the min and max is greater than or equal to 730, I show the yearly granularity. So with that, that is the entire trick. Let's see how that works. When we're on dynamic, if we filter down to a smaller date range, we show that monthly granularity, even smaller, less than three months worth of data, I'm showing that daily granularity. And then finally, all the way out, we're showing that yearly granularity. So that's the entire trick. I think this is really cool, especially if your data is continuing to grow and you don't wanna to have to redefine how your visuals are set up. This trick is actually pretty easy to get you like 80% of the way. It's just adding that dynamic option adds a few extra steps. But if you've made it this far, you'll reap the benefits of having that really cool dynamic data access. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out my training over at training.bielite.com. We have some great courses on Power BI, DAX, Alteryx, SQL. The link is down in the description and I'll see you in the next video.